Okay, I'm going to bring up the C word right now. It's a word that we all don't like to hear, and that's, of course, change. Mm -hmm. But, Dr. Wayne, if we are looking at making some changes to our health habits, could you give us six things that we need to consider? By all means. Number one, you've got to figure this out. What kind of health are you in now? Because we're going to learn eventually that there's an evolution of disease, okay? There's evolution. There's a process. You've got, um, there's six stages there. So we've got to figure out what stage of health are we in now to take our level of approach. There's a difference between diagnosis and prognosis. I know you probably heard both words. Mm -hmm. Diagnosis are what are the, what is the disease? What is the, let's say, uh, what 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 is, what is it like the, uh, what is the disease? Mm -hmm. And then uh, prognosis is what are your chances? What is the opposite? So what kind of health are you in now? And number two. Do you have strong enough genetics? Do you have a, a good foundation in your whole physiology to, to deal with this? What kind of help are you going to need, okay? Number three, do you want it bad enough? How bad do you want it? And remember, people only want what they want when the want is more than the effort. Well, we'll make changes when we want it bad enough. Man, I wanted my health bad enough. I was wounded in Vietnam on my third term over there in South Vietnam in Na Bay. And when I was so sick at my stomach so much, and when I came back, I had rheumatic fever three times, by the way. I was supposed to die before I was 30. I'm 65 now. Never felt better in my life. And I know now, because I've consulted with all of the greats all over the world who were in excess of 100. And I said, what did you do? What are you doing? Honey, I keep a good attitude, you know what I mean? <laughs> or I laugh, on, and one lady used to tell me, she was my spiritual guide in my life. She was 98 when she passed. Bless her, sweet soul, I loved her to death. And we have got a whole story in attitude, I'll tell you about. She says, honey, I laugh until I leak. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever works for you, right? <laughs> I said, so people, <laughs> people always want what they want when the want is more than the effort. Now, will you discipline yourself along the way? Will you do it? I mean, uh, I'm going to, and when you tune into the 12th uh, component of this whole series that you and I are going to do, when you tune into the 12th component, you're going to know, okay, here's what I'm going to do in the morning, here's what I'm going to do for the next thing, next thing, next thing. Will you discipline yourself along the way? And here's another thing to ask yourself. What is the iatrogenic portion of the disease? What, uh, then what does that mean? That's the physician's induced disease. Because we know right now, I'm going to give you some websites. I want to read you a couple websites here that I'm going to share with you, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you these in a second, but I never will forget. Now, physicians induce disease. That's iatrogenic. There is so much. Now, I'm not cutting the medical community down by any stretch of the imagination. They're doing some awesome things. Artificial insemination, brain tumors, uh, terrible accidents. I don't care how much carrot juice I would have drank when I had the accident up there in Chicago doing the uh, Chicago triathlon when I was mm -hmm. training on a bike. I had ten, uh, six stitches here, 15, eight stitches here in the side of my head, 15 in the side of my, uh, my head, mm -hmm. on my face, and then a head, neck and a brace for three weeks. Hey, Dr. Wayne, yes. Oh, to do this. I'm so blessed. Oh, oh to be able to just move yes. your head. Oh, wow. So, yes. So what we need to do, I remember when Paul Harvey came out once again, I'm bringing him back up again. He said, Mary Ellen has no more gallbladder trouble. She just gave birth to an eight-pound baby boy. What a surprise to her. She didn't know she was pregnant. What a surprise to her husband. He didn't know she was pregnant. But what an even greater surprise to her physician who diagnosed her with gallbladder trouble. Page two. Now, physicians induced disease is our sixth leading cause of death in the country. By the way, about that accident. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much carrot juice I'd have drank mm -hmm. or whatever. If I hadn't had the medical community and their brilliance with their equipment and their help and all of that on the spot, I'd have died bleeding to death up there. Yeah, so we need to go ahead and embrace the, the people who are doing some great things. We've always got good and bad, mm -hmm. um, uh, let's say, hosts on mm -hmm. these TV shows. We've got good and bad physicians. We've got good and bad uh, senators. Mm -hmm. There's always good and bad in every field. But sometimes the bad, people remember the bad things more than they do the good. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree? I absolutely because agree. Because it's easier to talk about the problem mm -hmm. than to embrace the solution. Mm -hmm. So what are the indicia? Now, here's what I'd like for you to do today. 
go to google.com. I'm going to read you a couple sites here, okay? Now, what we need to do is to write down when you're in Google 20 tips to help prevent medical errors and get that report by the government. And, and it's a government agency, and here's what it is. It's ahrq.gov. When you go there and, and get that, it is amazing what you're going to learn. The medical uh, errors are the sixth leading cause of our death in our country. And look, they have so many patients that they're dealing with every day, Jenna. Mm -hmm. Every day that sometimes, you know, you make a mistake and maybe the records got mixed up or, or even the physician, uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, he, he prescribed something that was correct, but yet the adverse effects from it that he was unbeknownst to cause the death. So his intentions are great, and they've got some wonderful things they're doing. So don't let me come across as to think that they're, they're bad. No, no, they're very good. But we have to understand that we should not be worried about the war on terror. Mm -hmm. We should be worried about the war on error. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. So most errors, as I say, are come from problems because of our complex issue on, on, uh, in our health care system. But the single most important thing that I believe that people can do to help prevent errors is to be an active member in their own health care. Mm -hmm. Now, I like that. Don't you agree? I do agree. Now, mm -hmm. Jenna, don't you agree? that? Well, first of all, any doctor will tell you, you do not go to the hospital to get well. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to go to the hospital to get well. You go there to get care. Mm -hmm. You go home to get well. Mm -hmm. So it's a managed disease care, not a managed health care. That's a misnomer. And the opposite of health is disease, okay? So let me give you another couple sites here that I want to share with you if you'll do this. I wrote these down for you. JCAHO.org, and you'll get the National Pub uh, Patient Safety Goals with that one. Also go to the IHI.org, and that'll give you showing how to protect all these millions of people from harm. And then uh, voice... For patients, that'd be the number four. Right. Voice right for patients. Mm -hmm. Good. Dot com. And by the way, here's something that just when we come back, because I know we're running short on time with this for a minute. Mm -hmm. When we come back, I want to talk about something that's going to absolutely, pardon the use of the cliche, blow your mind oh. in the hospital. Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to hear that. Yes. What's going to blow our mind right <laughs> after these messages? Stay with us.